All right, good morning seniors, happy Tuesday. Um, I'm gonna do this lesson from my dining room table today just because West is doing a lot of cleaning and they wanted to limit the amount of people um, who were in and out of the building. Um, so they told us if we didn't need to go in to please not go in. So I'm gonna be trying to do a lot from home this week. Um, so yeah, this is where I'll be doing the lessons. Um, I'm gonna go through the slideshow that I posted in Google Classroom. It's gonna be kind of hard to see on this video. My intention would be that you listen to this and then look through the slides yourself um, or vice versa. If you try to look on here, I think with the brightness, it's gonna be kind of hard. I just wanted to use this as a reference kind of to guide my own talking um, and also so that you could see what slide I was on at what point so you could follow along on your own. Um, so I'm just gonna briefly go through history of journalism in the US today. It's about nine slides. Um, it's going to be really similar to the way that I usually do instruction in class. So really brief overview, kind of give you guys a rundown and then give you your assignment and stuff to work on um, so that you can do um, work on your own, think critically on your own, that kind of thing. Um, so this shouldn't take longer than about 10 minutes. Before I start, real quick, just an update for you. I will have grades all the way updated by four this afternoon. That's my first goal. Um, so please, if you have questions about your grade, just wait until four. See once everything is updated where you're at and then reach out to me with any questions, comments, or concerns. Um, and then beyond that, just know that I'm gonna try to stay really on top of stuff with grading this week. So as soon as your assignment for this is done, I should try to get that in pretty quickly. Um, and grades will be updated fairly um, regularly this week. So that's just something that you can expect. Um, and then once again, kind of like I said yesterday, I'm gonna do instruction every day, hopefully no more than 10 minutes a day um, with something like this to kind of guide your learning. And then you'll have the assignments today, tomorrow and Thursday to work on as well. And then hopefully if all goes according to plan, we'll be back in the classroom on Monday the 30th. However, if the closure lasts longer than that, which I know some people are kind of expecting it to, we don't know for sure yet. Right now I'm expecting to be back the 30th, but if it does go longer than that, we will just continue this exact same format with three assignments a week and daily instruction. So if you have any questions about that, please let me know. Um, otherwise, let's get started. So the first US newspaper started in 1690 in Boston. As we move through this, you'll find that a lot of early news took place in Boston. That was just sort of the hub um, for newspapers in the early um, days of the United States. Um, it only had one publication though. The very first newspaper started by Benjamin Harris was called Public Occurrences, both foreign and domestic. He started it in 1690, just to kind of give them, the people of the colonies an update on what was going on back in England and what was going on in the colonies, not yet the United States, but what would become the United States. He just wanted a way to kind of circulate news. Um, as you read yesterday, news has sort of always been around since early civilization. It just didn't exist in the U.S. yet. So Benjamin Harris wanted to bring um, publications that he saw in England when he was there and kind of bring those sorts of things back to the U.S. Um, wasn't the U.S. at the time, the colonies, to kind of give them information, keep people updated. Um, he saw news as working really well back in England and he wanted there to be a similar form of keeping the public in the know um, in this new country. So that's sort of why he started it. However, um, it was very quickly suppressed. Um, any government authorities or leaders, especially because at the time they were still run by England, were really, really controlling of publication that went out of what the public was able to know. So after only one publication of this, um, it was very quickly shut down. But it was the very first um, paper that ever was established in the US and it gave a lot of other people the idea to start something similar. Um, so John Campbell started the Boston Newsletter about 10 years later, 1704, I guess that's 14 years later. Um, and that was a single sheet paper, so it was just one sheet front and back that he printed on. Mostly it actually only covered news that was going on back in England and there was a small section on the second page dedicated to local news. So for the most part, this paper existed just to let people know what was going on um, back in their homeland. And then there was a little bit dedicated to what was going on in the new land and the way that things were getting established and stuff like that. Um, this paper actually lasted a lot longer. It lasted through 1776, which obviously is an important year because that's the year of the American Revolution, kind of when the U.S. gained its independence. And it's not a coincidence that this paper ended that same year um, with a new country, with our independence, came a lot of new expectations with journalism. Um, so that's when the Boston Newsletter quickly died out. But it was the first continuously published newspaper in the U.S., so that's where it's important. And because of that and because of its influence, papers quickly spread among the colonies and along the East Coast. Um, one particular person among all the publishers and editors that existed at this time is James Franklin, Franklin, brother of Benjamin Franklin, who you all should be familiar with. Um, and he founded the New England Current in 1721 and that lasted through 1727. It was suppressed in 1726 and ultimately shut down in 1727 um, because government control at the time, similar to what happened with um, the other paper, is just that they didn't want a lot of news getting out. They didn't like 
um, public opinion being spread rapidly, especially in a time of tension where a lot of public opinion was really anti-England. Um, 1726 is obviously before 1776. Um, so James Franklin's paper faced a lot of government suppression, but it lasted for about five years before it actually did shut down, and that was enough time for people to get their opinion out there. Most writers at the time um, wrote and edited under pseudonyms because a lot of what they printed was considered libel or um, like defamation because it would have to do with um, England or with the disagreement of the way the colonies were handling things or with their opinions on why aren't we our own country yet, like different stuff like that where people were expressing opinions that kind of pissed somebody off in one way or another. Um, so they printed under pseudonyms, and Benjamin Franklin wrote for James Franklin under the pseudonym Silence Do Good, and that's actually um, pretty significant just because he posted a ton of um, kind of revolutionary stuff under that name, got the U.S. really excited about kind of becoming their own independent country, spread a lot of um, encouragement among the people through these newspapers, so Silence Do Good is actually a really important figure in journalistic history. Um, and that's actually Ben Franklin. So that's kind of some history of their papers. Um, ben Franklin then moved to Philadelphia in 1728 after his brother's newspaper was suppressed. And he started his own paper, the Pennsylvania Gazette. And then through his franchising of that paper, other papers started to pop up along the East Coast. So that's kind of how this spread started happening among the colonies and among the East Coast. Um, ben Franklin had a really strong influence there. Um, and then by 1750, there were 14 weekly newspapers in the United States. Um, there were six major colonies, the six largest colonies. Um, that's where these papers were taking place. So that's kind of a little bit about the early history of newspapers pre the revolution. So all of this is stuff that happened pre-1776. Um, and then by the 1770s, papers um, were really pro the patriot cause. So people among the newspapers, editors, publishers, writers, all those people were really pro the patriot cause. The patriot cause obviously is pro the revolution. Um, they didn't want to remain part of England. They wanted to be an independent nation. Um, and that was being spread among the newspapers. And that's really important because it gave readers hope that they weren't alone in thinking that, that that was sort of the idea spreading amongst the country. Um, more and more people started becoming kind of pro the patriot cause. Um, and then by the time the war began, there were 37 weekly newspapers in operation, all of those supporting the patriot cause, all of those very pro the United States staying as an independent nation. And again, news is important because it spreads information and it tells the public what other people are thinking. It gets ideas out there. And when they see so many people in support of the patriot cause, that reinforces their ideas that the patriot cause is a good cause and kind of brought her out um, this unity surrounding the revolution. Um, following the war, 20 of the 37 newspapers survived, but 33 new ones started up. So newspapers didn't really die out after the war. They kind of just flourished and more and more started becoming established. Um, and in the early time of the United States, newspapers were really foundational to the way that our country started evolving. Um, but they were also really politically affiliated. Um, so by 1800, about 30 years later, there were 234 papers that were being published, 234 papers in circulation. They had pretty wide readership. Most of these rivers were on the East Coast because that's really where the only civilization was at the time. Um, and they were super partisan. So if you think back to early U.S. histories, you have the Federalists versus the Republicans. Um, you think like Alexander Hamilton versus Aaron Burr, those rivalries. Um, and papers were super, super politically affiliated. So if anyone ever tries to tell you that they missed the days when... Um, papers and news didn't have bias, they're wrong because those days never existed. Um, papers were sort of always founded in spreading public opinion. Um, and the earliest newspapers, once the U.S. was a country, like after the revolution, newspapers at the time were only partisan based because that was how they got their funding. People used newspapers to kind of campaign, to spread awareness about their ideas, to get public people, to get the public and the people of the U.S. on board with what was important to them. Um, so all papers at the time sort of had political affiliations for a long time. There were some that were independent, but about 95% of newspapers at the time were politically affiliated because that was really the only way that you could have a successful paper. You needed someone who would fund you. You needed someone who would support you. That's what the public cared about. They didn't really care about what else was going on. Their interest at the time was kind of the Federalist versus Republican debate. They wanted to know what kind of government was being established in this country, where things were going, um, what kind of leadership they were falling under. They didn't come from a democracy, so they didn't know what that looked like. So they were really interested through reading through these newspapers to find out what was going on, what decisions were being made, how this would affect their day to day, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, political affiliations were really high in newspapers at the time, Federalist versus Republican, um, really strong party affiliations there. Um, 
and you can read more about that if that's what you choose to research with the assignment today is just the different political affiliations. Um, for my purposes, purposes today, I just want you guys to know that political affiliations were strongly connected to early newspapers. The media has always been associated with political bias. It's never not been that way in the United States. Um, so here on this slide, when I say political affiliations continued, is just a bullet point list of the different ways um, that parties would get politically involved. If that's something that you're interested in, I really want you to look at this, look at some of these bullets, um, use that as your topic to research today. If that's something that you don't care about, fine, that's okay with me. I just want you to understand that newspapers were heavily related to political affiliations since early United States history. That's not something that's new in the U.S. where the media has bias. That's always been around. This is a quote from White Law Read about um, partisan newspapers. I personally think that this concept is really interesting just because it really influences the political media that we see today. Um, remember, bias isn't necessarily bad. It's just important that you understand what the bias is when you're consuming news. Um, so this is a quote that I want you guys to read through when you're looking through this slide as well. He was the editor of the New York Tribune. Okay, two more slides. We're almost there. Rise of modern news. Um, as uh, um, America got established, as new inventions came out, as the industrial era sort of began, we have the rise of the telegraph, the linotype machine, and larger printing presses. And essentially these things are just important because they allow for quicker ways for newspapers to get published, they allowed for more newspapers to get published, and they allowed for a widespread circulation of newspapers at the time. Um, so these inventions kind of led to the emergence of newspapers everywhere on corners, the um, newsboys came out to deliver papers. Um, it just became so that more and more people had access to the news because they were able to print more and more copies of the news. Um, so these are some important um, establishments that kind of came out of that. So we have the New York Herald by James Gordon Bennett Sr. Um, and this was the first newspaper that had a regular staff covering not just political news, but also what was going on on Wall Street, also covering um, kind of local information about what was going on just in businesses and stuff like that. He was the first one who actually had international correspondence and correspondence in other cities outside of where he was based. Um, so that's the New York Herald. And then in the New York Tribune of 1841 was one of the first newspapers um, that started covering like sports and business um, and wasn't politically affiliated. So that's something that's important is we also see the rise of non-politically affiliated newspapers. Obviously there's gonna always be bias in news, but these are the first newspapers that kind of started working independently because they had the readership and the funding to operate without the help of a political party. And they also started to recognize that if they claimed to be nonpartisan, that would increase their readership because they wouldn't just be focusing on one group of people, they'd be able to access everyone in the United States. Um, so that's where the New York Herald and the New York Tribune are kind of important. And then along those same lines, we have the rise of the penny press, which was established at the same time as all of this, just during the 1830s. Um, the penny press was just sort of the revolutionary idea that you could sell newspapers for less than six cents. So six cents was kind of the really common price of a newspaper at the time. And then with the rise of the penny press, it's what it sounds like press was available for one cent. Um, so the public had full access to it this way. So six cents made it so that really only the wealthy were able to acquire access to news, which obviously is really problematic in this new free society that they wanted to establish. Um, so the penny press came out as a way for everyone to have access to the news, no matter what kind of socioeconomic class you came from. Um, and so that was founded by someone named Benjamin Day. He started The Sun. It was actually kind of a tabloid, gossipy type of newspaper, but it influenced the Herald and the New York Times and other really prominent papers at the time to also sell for only a penny so they could increase their readership. Um, so that's where I'm gonna stop today and tomorrow we'll move on a little bit um, into the 1800s through the 1900s history of the United States. But I just wanted to give you guys that idea of where journalism was founded, how it kind of spread, what its early influences were, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's important to me that you understand the history of journalism because I don't think you can understand journalism today without understanding where it comes from. You can't get to know a person well if you don't understand their home life and their background. You don't really know them if you don't know that information about them. Similar with any topic historically, you're not going to understand it well unless you understand its history and its background. So that's why we do this. Um, that is all for today. Your assignment is up in classroom. If you have any questions about it, please let me know. Basically, you're just picking four things um, from the list that I just talked about with early U.S. history of journalism, and you're doing your own kind of in-depth research on that. Uh, so that'll be due on Monday, the 30th. So yeah, otherwise have a good Tuesday.